Okay, which medication? Is this how we feel about it? It's a little bit like that, isn't it? So probably one of the commonest things, you know, my, my practice nurses do most of my diabetes. Uh, they see the patient's annual review, and then they'll come in, uh, perhaps at the end of a clinic, and I've got five minutes before I've got to go and do my health school, and then I start my, my, my uh, next routine surgery. I say, well, I've got this patient, HP1C is now this, they're on this, this, and this, what do you want to do next? And you've got to make a decision, and you've got to get on board with it really quickly. So uh, it's challenging, you know, there's no doubt about it. It's a really difficult area. And there's loads of things you might take into account when you're trying to decide which medication to use when. How old is the patient? We've talked about that. How long have they had type 2 diabetes for? What's their weight? So what effect do you want that medication to have on their weight? Is there a real big need for them to lose weight? Or is weight not a major issue? Comorbidities. Have they got cardiovascular disease? And we'll talk about why that's very relevant when we talk about the newer agents. What other comorbidities have they got? Renal impairment. That's a big one when we're talking about prescribing making decisions. Have they already got complications of type 2 diabetes? You know, we know that once patients have got complications that actually improving their glycemic control might be a really good thing to do. But if they've got kidney impairment, for example, the risk of hypoglycemia goes up. So you've got to balance things. What do they do for a job? Do they work up a crane or drive for a living? Do you really need to avoid hypoglycemia? How much does it cost? It is relevant, isn't it? You know, we had some uh, data a few weeks ago that now the spend in uh, England is over a billion pounds on uh, prescribing in primary care for diabetes. So, you know, huge amounts of money. And, uh, of course, we have to think about the cost. A lot of the newer agents are more expensive, although long-term benefits may be uh, sort of counteract that over time. Uh, but we do need to think about cost. Certainly, in, when GLP-1 receptor agonists first came out, I was the highest prescriber in Wales, apparently, for them. So, uh, you know, it does come back to us, and sometimes you have to explain why you've made those decisions and was it for the best interest of the patient. Safety and tolerability, of course. Efficacy, how much do you need to have an, as, as regards effect on HbA1c? Is the HbA1c really high and you've got to bring it down a long way? Or actually, do you just want to nudge it down? That's going to affect how you're going to, what you're going to decide to use. Uh, racial, genetic, and ethnic differences. And of course, patient preference. Discussing with the patients, well, you could have this one, which will do this, and that one, which might do that. Which one do you think would be best for you? And certainly that's something which I'll often put to patients, and it can be useful to empower them in that way.